right, so episode three-ish. Three-ish. <laughs> Actually, I think it's like number six. <laughs> well, episode-wise, yeah, it's six. This is a new week episode. Three. Week, week three. three. Week three. It's a new episode. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and it's your turn. <laughs> so, uh, in week three, uh, I was given the the subject of cannibalism in World War Two. You're welcome. Yeah. And I, 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 hope. <laughs> I kind of assume that you and my wife are working together to try to... to um, milk whatever pleasure I get out of watching History Channel or World <laughs> War II documentaries out of, out of me um, by giving me this subject. So, yeah, like I said, you're it, welcome. It, it definitely, it definitely wasn't pleasant reading. <laughs> it wasn't um, light reading. Okay. No, it wasn't. Uh, th- there's a lot of information about it, but it's, it's definitely not, pl- well, not pleasant. I'm, I'm glad there's actually a lot of information because I, I was fearing that this would be really short and you would be kind of pissed that I gave it to you no, because there wasn't that much. But No, I so, mean, the, I'm, surprisingly, there there is. I, I will say that up, um, just, the, just the dive that I did, uh, I didn't go as deep into uh, Russia and Germany as I probably could have. Uh, sorry, anyone who was looking at German cannibalism <laughs> on the side of World War II, I'm sure there's plenty out there for you to read, but um, I do have some information on that, but the Japanese is just, that side of it is way more robust. There's, more, and, okay, and cool. there's apparently, like, that's like a whole subset of, like, investigation was into <laughs> uh, Japanese cannibalism. During World War Two, fantastic um, cannibalism in general. I'm, I'm pretty intrigued. Okay, so. okay. And that sounds horrible. But so, I am. So, so, be it. so where I'll start is actually with Russia and Germany, since it is a little bit smaller. And I'm going to caveat all of this into a, a secondary piece that because I couldn't just leave it at cannibalism in World War Two. Of course, I had to go a little beyond. Okay. Um, so in Russia, there was a siege, the siege of Leningrad, right? Um, it was lasted for 872 days. Jesus. Okay. Um, and in the siege of Lenin or of Leningrad, um, after all the rats and birds that they could capture, all the pets had been eaten, oh, eaten, right. They, uh, they resor- resorted to cannibalism and, uh, so much to the point that, uh, a special brigade of the Russian police department was, Dedicated to stopping cannibalism, in the in the to stopping cannibalism. Yeah, they they had to stop it because it was getting out of control. <laughs> okay, so the, there's there's really kind of two parts to uh, cannibalism in World War Two. There's necessity cannibalism, yeah. which is I don't have anything else to eat. Right. We got to eat to survive that kind of thing. Right. Um, that's much more prevalent in the German and Russian side. Okay. Um, I thought that that was going to be prevalent in. The Japanese side as well. Turns out it was, but there was also a fair amount of it that was. They liked the flavor. <laughs> not a, it was more of a power play thing. Oh, getting their energy. Or, well, or not like even that. It was like another scaring the shit out of their opponent oh. kind of thing. So interesting. I, I'll get I'll get into that. But all right. Okay, so <clears throat> the Russians <laughs> predominantly ate the dead. Okay. Instead of making new meals. And the reason that they could do this um, without having to tap into the living. Uh-huh. But they're in a siege situation. Starvation was very prominent. Not to mention, you know, any other reason that you're going to well, die in cold-ass Russia. What, okay. Yeah. So 2.8 million people, Soviets, died in the time period between, is eight month period between 41 and 42. So, they'd exhausted pets, anything that they could find scurrying around, so they resulted in eating the dead. Which there's no shortage of. The 2.8 million people, that's going to feed quite a populace. So, the the other idea is that the Russians were, kind of had had an advantage of the the meat being safer because of the low temperature. Because it was freezing. Yeah, so oh. it didn't decay as quickly. So that that interesting that stockpile, yeah. if, so to speak, <laughs> right. of dead bodies, two point eight million people. Yeah, they're they're gonna have a longer lifespan on the food before it decays. Longer shelf life. Longer shelf life um, <laughs> wow. to your neighbor, yeah. so to speak. 
Um, so these Soviets, now the 2.8 million people that died, those were, that I was talking about, Right. those were Soviet POWs at, at one point. And those that died, that 2.8 that died in the eight months, they were in, it was the winter of like between 41 and 42. And uh, the, the, the Germans did something with their POWs. It's not really shocking is they weren't wasting resources on feeding them. You see what I'm saying? So um, they didn't take care of them. Yeah. In other words, yeah. why? Starvation is cheaper than a bullet. Right. Um, so, so you might have already said this, but they didn't, so they didn't hunt People. They didn't kill people no. for food because there was enough people I mean, dying on their own. And I, they only ate, basically, their own team? Well, the, so, from what I... The research that I found, and, you know, Russia and Germany are both very tight, tight-lipped tight about, yeah, true. you know, stuff that went on during the war, and especially the Cold War, there wasn't a lot of information going back and forth. Yeah. But um, it was much more opportunistic, in, in the cannibalism that they chose. So I don't know that they were really checking anybody's ID, <laughs> right. but it was Fair also enough. like, I mean, there was a shit ton of dead people. There so was just bodies fucking, and so like, it was food. Yeah, you, you know, okay. pick around the bullet hole right. kind of <laughs> stuff. Right. Uh, so when I said, so the, the, eight, the 872 days siege of, of Leningrad led to a lot of starvation and cannibalism in, in Leningrad and I guess Leningrad proper. Okay. Like you know, surrounding areas, um, and the 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 Soviets always use they use what's what's called the scorch earth theory of defense, whereas they drag um, their supply lines in closer to the capital. So you know, an invading army like uh, Napoleon or the Germans in World War Two, they would what they do is, is they essentially like move backwards, like retreat. And as they were retreating, they would burn the cities and towns and crops and supplies as they were going On backwards. So the idea is the, the farther that you pursue them into their country, the longer your supply line gets behind you. Oh, wow. So um, basically... That's kind of crazy, actually. Well, yeah, I mean, but it also, I mean, you better bring a fucking jacket if you're going to war in Russia, you yeah, know? Yeah, so yeah. <laughs> right. you get into the dead of winter, like these diesel tanks and stuff like that, they start getting real... Fidgety, so supply lines slow down in the winter as, as it is. Wow. So, so the idea is, you know, the Russians would would retreat to a certain, you know, fallback point, and then you ha- you can't feed off of the cities that you're 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 taking over because they burned and destroyed everything. Right. So, it, it's actually kind of brilliant, but you have to have the land mass and the supplies to be able to do that. Right. Well, it is brilliant. So go ahead and follow us if you want to. It's going to be a rough road. Yeah, yeah. Come on, keep coming. Good keep luck. coming. Keep coming. Yeah. So they, <laughs> right. so the Russians did that to the Germans. They they pulled them in, pulled them in, pulled them in, and uh, basically in like forty three, uh, nineteen forty three. Uh, <laughs> Thanks. The the Germans declared that you know they were the loser. We lose. Right. Right. So the, <laughs> the it was the, basically the the. The victory of Stalingrad, All okay, right, right. and in the victory of victory of Stalingrad was there was uh, about a hundred thousand German soldiers that were kind of still behind enemy lines at that point, Damn. and the Russians decided they were going to take them as as POWs, okay, and so they moved in hundred thousand. So they they moved this hundred thousand German soldiers into Siberia, which is already very unforgiving, Central Asian. Uh, area right. <laughs> and uh, the the Russians knowing that everything that had been done to their people in the the preceding war mm-hmm. didn't really pamper the German troops <laughs> right. so uh, there was a lot of uh, essence or a lot of you know reports of cannibalism in these POW camps in, in uh, Siberia and well, I'm wondering also and Maybe I'm not getting there, or maybe you're going to get to it, or maybe there was so much information. But I'm wondering, did the prisoners that weren't being fed end up having to result to yes. eating their neighbors? Or, yes, or, because you know. because of those hundred thousand Germans that uh, got got pulled into the the POW camp in in Russia, five thousand made it out. Damn. And 
the the idea was it was very very much an idea of we're gonna lock you in a pen and we're not gonna kill you we're gonna let time starvation cannibalism those types of things wow take over that's brutal so what whereas it may not have it may have started as opportunistic right in in the POW camp it definitely probably got much more of a brutal you know kill or be killed eat or be eaten yeah. type of situation yeah. hey check out dave but he's a he's almost a goner dibs on that thigh yeah exactly so 100,000 100,000 people go in 5,000 come out so Damn, you, you that's know. crazy yeah so th- there these are and i hate to I hate to display it this way, but these are the more gentle versions of cannibalism from <laughs> from World War Two. Well, there's like you said, there's a different gentle. Yeah, okay, interesting word Can- choice. But cannibalism it's, for intent or cannibalism for survival yeah. is, is is a different conversation. These are survival based cannibalism stories, right? Right. Um, <sighs> Which I honestly. I don't well, we could it. probably discuss afterwards. In the same situation, guess what, dude? If me and you were on a mountain and, we di- and you died for me, dude, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, and, and I get it. Like, and that's what I'm saying. Like, it's not gentle, but it's it's survival. It's survival. It, it is, it is what yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it's not pretty. No. Now, so, leaving them to starve and just basically fend for themselves, that's pretty brutal. That, that's that pretty is brutal, but the, but the idea being like, okay. We're not going to spend any they, money on you. Like, but. the Germans, n- neither the Germans nor the Russians, like, went out with the intention of I'm going to kill you and eat you. Right, right, right. Which is kind of like how you classify Cannibal. traditional cannibalism, I guess, in the myth, right. like in the idea of cannibalism, you always think it's like these tribes or whatever that go right. out and with the intention of I'm going to kill you and then eat you. Yeah, right. Right, where this is more like that oh Bill's dead, so I'm going to eat him I don't to wanna... survive the winter. <laughs> right. Sorry, you know what Bill. I'm saying? So <laughs> so that <sighs> When Will, I, I'd hope you do the same to me. When I characterize it as gentle, I, I'm much more. It, the intention is that it was survival. Yeah, no, I get making it. it gentle. They, they didn't have a choice, right? Kind of thing, right, right, right. Uh, but well, you said it, but they didn't set out to to feast on human I flesh, mean, right? It okay. Wasn't a... So, just one thing, just like I would like to point out is, you've gone through one of the bloodiest wars mm-hmm. of all time. And yeah. you're on the German side. You're on the losing side of that. And you okay. you pulled in as a POW oh. in Russia oh. after <laughs> losing one of the bloodiest wars Damn. of all time. And then you and 100,000 people are locked in a camp. The ones who survived, the 5,000 that survived, can you imagine the level of PTSD those dudes walked out and, with? Uh, the stories that like, they just... <laughs> Like, I didn't really even want to dig them. too deep into some of these stories. Because wow. I have a couple books that are... Uh, their stories of survivor stories of people who like survived in the gulag and stuff in Russia. And I mean, the stories that are in there are so dark and just upsetting. I I read them uh, intentionally. Like it was, it was no one asked me to read them. I read them. Uh, But I mean, it's really dark shit, but I couldn't even imagine you increase the level to losing Horrible battles, and then then you're eating your buddy. Yeah, like, morale's down. All right, this yeah. is not and, good. And, and, and now, oh Jesus, and it gets worse. Like, yeah, I'm so, eating Dave or Bill. Whoever yeah, exa- exactly. Dude, that I mean, is actually really horrible, and I don't know if I would want to be one of the five thousand. Yeah, I don't know. I, the, I, uh, I yeah. you you got to imagine that you're not coming out of there. Almost want to tap out at some point. Yeah, in there. and and the the survival the the sheer, you know angst yeah oh, man. that your brain would play on the rest of your life oh. I, I just couldn't even imagine no absolutely how do you come back from that so how, how do you go on to actually be <laughs> how could you fall? I don't know. super sunshiny and cheery story yeah, right. uh, yeah, so <laughs> so <laughs> that that depression that dark side of the story mm-hmm. um we we move into the the pacific theater <laughs> which is japan and japan took cannibalism in world war ii and did what really what Japan's known for, and it's just like really improving on the entire model that exists. <laughs> um, you know, if, if if you you set them in front of a task, they're going to make it bigger and better than anybody else, and and they really went for the numbers when it came to cannibalism. So so do tell. So my theory into Japanese 
cannibalism when I first started researching this was I assumed very <laughs> short-sightedly that uh, cannibalism in on the Japanese side in the Pacific theater was going to be much similar, much more similar to a symptom of the issue that plagued them throughout World War II, which was the Japanese army was much more built for a short engagement, a very intense, brutal battle, mm -hmm. but not a long project projected engagement. Like the, they were not definitely not built for long term stamina was not their yeah. strong suit. Right. They, they were not a siege based military. So um, I kind of assumed that that's what cannibalism was going to be the basis. Right. And it and maybe in short, that was kind of where it started. All right. Um, you know that there is the story of you know a Japanese soldier was allotted as a ration eight hundred grams of. Uh, rice a day plus can you know tinned meat and that that number dropped down to uh, 50 grams Jesus. so I mean 800 to 50 you know there's there's definitely that vacuum of needing protein and calories just to survive then you take it and you it, you multiply the fact that they're in subtropic temperatures in they're the summer used to this, right uh, you know, I mean I don't know if they're not used to it but they're definitely not used to uh, malnourishment. Well, right, and the and amount of energy that is just—I can ass only assume, of course, uh, necessary fighting a to war? fight, right? Yeah, <laughs> well, uh, successfully. I mean, yeah. So yeah, yeah, you need some food. So for anybody who doesn't know, like Japan, they inhabited a, a bunch of Pacific islands, and it was kind of tasked to the Americans to clear out said islands to get a, us a stronghold into you know, shipping lanes and, and, you know, airports and things like that. And so the, a lot of these islands were very heavily contested. Um, there's a hell of a lot of bloodshed and, and fighting uh, in the Pacific theater. Um, but also the fact that them being spread out across these islands saps their supply lines as well. Like, it's hard as hell for Japan to go from... Island one, island two, island three, island four, you know, and then resupply and then do this. Resupply and do that. the entire, right, okay. Now, the, so I was like, okay, this is going to be another, you know, opportunistic kind of cannibalism side. Right, because it, they, for survivor. For, for so survival. survival. Right, and, okay. and where I was saying, you know, it may have been in the beginning. All right. Some of them may have stayed in the kind of that cannibalistic world as a, a survival thing, mm -hmm. kind of in the beginning or in long term. So the, the the Japanese were definitely known on these setting it straight. Not all Japanese, soldiers. not all Japanese <laughs> were were crazy. Enjoyed the cannibalism. In, enjoy. There were definitely some. The, you know, some stories are definitely like I said. The, this is very heavily researched, mm. especially there's like Australian research that was done, nice. and um, so so. You know, there, there there was a lot to kind of read up on. All right. But, um, so... Cool? cool? Yeah. <laughs> I'm Sorry. glad we're... Yeah. <laughs> so, so cannibalism on the Japanese side definitely started as, as kind of uh, opportunistic. Necessary, right. But the, the Japanese were... I don't know. I'm not going to say first because we don't really know, or I don't really know. I'm sure somebody out there knows, but... <laughs> They were the one, they ate both sides of the line. So they ate the Allied soldiers, and then they ate their own fallen dead. Wow. Okay. Um, and they didn't give a shit if Bill was dead, or, you know. Come up with a Japanese name real quick. <laughs> Takahashi was dead. <laughs> there you go. You know, so they, they were eating to eat. Right. Okay. So, pro, you know, projected war, um, they... A protracted, sorry, uh, protracted war. Mm. They they get in. They're on these islands. They're cut off. Um, so some of the POW camps where they would kind of autonomous from the rest of the unit. The Japanese. POWs, the Japanese. Well, no. The, like, the, were they held there prisoners? The, the Japanese held American POWs right, or right. or anyone that came across their island. Really, right. they did. They didn't really give a shit. Really wouldn't get, like, um, they got to the point where supplies had kind of run out, and so their decision to combat this was they would pick one soldier out of the POW camp a day 
and then eat the soldier. Oh, wow. Um, and that was... Like, in front of... Well, so that would sustain... Well, nobody... I'm sure that nobody had a question of what was happening to... True. ...the dude that just got Very picked. true. They didn't go behind the curtain. Yeah. yeah no, right. so, so, I mean, as horrible as this is to say, that almost makes it a little gentler than the next story. Oh, okay. So that was in, in New Guinea that uh, there was a, a soldier who came back and he said, you know, I went before he was basically saved, you know, he'd seen this on a hundred different occasions. He'd lived a hundred days and there a hundred soldiers had been pulled out one at a time. Wow. Blah, 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 blah. So this, this dude, he lives, but he was like, that's nothing in comparison to what happened 50 miles down the road. Oh, okay, so 50 okay. miles down the road, they're doing the same kind of thing, right? All right. But they're eating the people while they're alive. Oh, Jesus. So they're going, they're, they, they pick oh. the dude out of the crowd, and then they're carving him up oh. and eating him. And then they don't even kill him. Oh, They my. throw him into a ditch oh. where, you know, shock or blood loss or whatever it is ends up, take, you know, killing the soldier. Now, so they're not doing. That's not for survival. If they're just kind of taking pieces, well, we don't know. Multitasking, but I mean, the the Japanese were definitely in a situation where bullets were were of a greater value to the Japanese than lives were, right. because they, you know, you you have a population, you have more people that you can set in front of it, but bullets you have to make. It has an infrastructure. Right. Uh, you know, that kind of idea. But, so, they wouldn't... Well, they could have slight cut the cut a neck or I, mercy kill or, but shoot, snap there, a neck or you something. You know, the terrorism idea of scaring the shit out of the populace that you're trying to control. Okay. They're killing people. And you're hearing your buddy in the, in the hut screaming, and then they're coming out with plates of food. And then he's still right. screaming... As he comes out looking like something out of a 70s horror film, and they just toss him into the ditch. And then right. your sleep is hearing this guy slowly die in a ditch oh. behind you. So, so. Well, and that, that's what I assumed was it was to send a message. Right. Like, either give us some information. You right, know, yeah. Whatever, so, whatever, whatever they need. You fall in line, or you're the next one in line. And it's twisted, though. So, Oof. so this continued. And, and what Imagine ended, having that job. Like, I'm the guy that's got to fillet the dude. Yeah. Oh. Well, I mean, although being in that situation, I can't even imagine what people were forced or, you know, had to do just for, <laughs> to for survive. survive. Yeah, I mean, and, and, you know, I, can't even fathom, I mean, we've so. kind of had this conversation before, but, I mean, there's definitely crazy people in the population that wouldn't have opposed to that being what they had signed on for. Yeah, I'll do it. Yeah, like, the guy who volunteers is a lot more scary to me than the guy who's forced into <laughs> right. it. Jesus, Carl. Yeah. <laughs> You're fucked. Yeah, so, um, that actual POW camp, uh, the one 50 miles in where they're eating the, the living, um, so, to paint you the picture, you know, subtropic, Pacific Island, um, shoddy at best, Hygiene and right. uh, sterilization oh, the smell uh, tactics. Must have been smell would have been amazing, uh, but the 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 POW camp itself uh, ran into a lot of disease issues uh, from the exact opposite reason that the people in Russia and Germany could sustain this oh, right. cannibalism Spoiling. is because you know you got rotting, decaying uh, flesh, and then you have like rats. And oh. other vermin that are pulling this decayed meat into the POW camp and nesting oh. in with the soldiers, so it's just spreading this horrible sickness. God. So instead of like throwing a couple shovels of dirt over the dead bodies, right? You know, there, there's a lot to be said that the idea of us burying the dead is, is more of a an idea. I mean, we do it now kind of as a, a right of you know, what we do for our dead to honor them. Right. You know, you know, back to the earth as I came from the earth kind of thing. Yeah. But that, it really kind of begs the idea of, we probably put people in the ground back in the day so the disease didn't spread. Right. You know, we get Explosives. covered up, you know, or we burn it. Burn it, right. Yeah. So, the, I mean, that kind of disease Oof. definitely kind of leapt into, you know, the camps that didn't decide that they were going to, 
treat the the res, the respect of the bodies the way they should. Um, Karma, bitch. So, <laughs> as as this happy story gets happier, <laughs> right. there there was actually a Japanese uh, uh, commander that that kind of passed it down to his people that it was punishable by death that if any Japanese soldier was found in this, it's not Iwo Jima. It's another, it's like Chichijima or something. It's another one of the islands. Yeah. But he said, you know, if any Japanese soldier is caught eating another Japanese soldier, I'm, it's punishable that by death. Oh, stop, okay. stop eating your, stop eating your butt. Yeah. Right. So, the idea being, you know, maybe this will slow down those opportunities that didn't have to come up. Right. Kind of, did he really get shot or, yeah, right. you know, whatever. So they were only yeah. allowed to, they were, cannibalism was not outlawed. It was just, it had to be bad guy. You got to eat the bad guy. Yeah, right, yeah. Right. It's got to be, well, I say bad guy, but it's got to be the guy right. shooting at you. The opposing, that you kill. right, right, right. So, um. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so, to, yeah, that's. That's a super happy idea behind that. It's but pretty crazy, actually. There, I didn't realize there was... Although, I mean, now that you're kind of saying all this, I mean, it was such a long time that, of course, food ran out. I mean, it's almost... It almost makes total sense. Yeah. And like, oh, I get well, it. That's what they have to do to survive. I mean, I get it. So... I shouldn't be that shocked that... Now, not the part about... Killing them while they're alive and that that, that was that, twisted, that was but, twisted. Well, yeah. it gets it gets farther <laughs> because the the dudes that were eating them while they were alive, um, the it, as all things do, things evolve, and they either they either kind of extinguish or they get ten times worse. Right. So in the areas where it got ten times worse, um, it was used as a. I mean, they knowingly were cannibalizing POWs in, in an effort to to scare the shit out of anyone. We're still talking the, about the Japanese. Japanese, right, yeah. Okay. yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, the, the, I'm going to end the story on okay. the Japanese. Okay, all right, cool, cool. But they, they, were, they were cannibalizing essentially as a fear tactic. Wow. And, and they were, there was... An, well, it's frightening. I mean. the, the, <laughs> you know, there was one POW camp, and this was on New Guinea, I believe, and it was... Uh, there were 19 POWs were getting eaten a day. Jesus. And some alive, some not. Uh, I feel like, I don't know why, but if you tell me cannibalism as an opportunity for survival, I feel better yeah. about that, yeah. obviously. Absolutely. But the the ones where they're using it as fear tactic, it's a very effective fear tactic because it's... it's Terrifying. From the root, I think, of most cultures, eating another person is like the last desecration, you know, right, like right. the last thing that well, nobody would do. And you just got to be batshit crazy. Yeah, like to be able to I see. Mean, yeah, it's... I mean, <laughs> most, I mean, you know... You Half of the horror films, the reason it's absolutely disgusting and terrifying is because there's, there's a cannibal... Uh, it's doing it out of pleasure but even versus if, necessity. Even if you look at, like, the animal kingdom, like it's definitely not a first choice. Oh, true. Yeah. To to pull off cannibalism. I mean, maybe a couple species, but you don't have the provocation of a species if they're eating themselves, like yeah. eating off your numbers. Well, so it's not the wild kingdom, but we we had a hamster growing up. My brother and I did. We put him in the cage together. Yeah. His ate mine, and yeah. I was like, "Well, fuck." So okay. hamsters, note to self, cannibals. So this gets me to my last section, and this is this is <laughs> this is where I had to kind of go off book. So. Okay. So, so we've had the conversation about uh, cannibalism in World War II, the, the Russians, the Germans, the Japanese. Uh, can, cannibalism has obviously been, uh, <laughs> I guess, a problem. <laughs> it's been an issue. <laughs> an issue in, in the past uh, is, you know, for more, more cultures than just, you know, long-term wars and, and uh, lack of food. Um, but there's a, a disease out there. It's called Kuru. 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 Um, okay. And it, Kuru is a, a very rare disease, and it is uh, caused by an infection, an infectious protein found in contaminated human brain tissue. Okay, so so you can only get Kuru from eating... A human brain. A human brain. Okay, 
And so, but here's where it gets kind of fucked up. <laughs> so I hate the idea of this zombie is where movies. It starts getting well, good. this is this is. <laughs> so I hate the idea of zombie movies. Like you, people like joke about zombies and stuff, and they're brains. always like brains. That shit drives me fucking crazy. That's right. like the worst. Because if you really look at it, the brain is like the hardest thing to get to. It's got the skull around. It's got it. the right. skull around it, and so the brain is like the last thing that would be on a zombie menu, you, right. assuming that that was a real thing. Yeah, absolutely. So, and it was really only, I mean, not to get it's too true. far I off. I where that came from. Well, it was only one movie franchise that talked about brains, and it was Return of the Living Dead. Right. Um, and they, they, did the, they had the talking zombies that you couldn't kill, didn't matter what you did. Yeah, and yeah, they yeah. always ate the brains. Always. And, and that's where it comes from. Brains. brains. Yeah. So, <laughs> but, so this awesome Kuru, movie, okay, sorry. This, this Kuru infection from this protein only comes from a protein found in the brain. And it, so cannibalistic groups that, that eat the brain, this protein, what it does is it goes into your brain and it basically burrows holes oh. through your gray matter. Because it, while it's a protein that comes from the brain, its job is to eat, eat gray it. matter. Oh. So it's eating holes in... It's literally eating your brain. In, in your brain. Wow. And the people who have... enjoyed cannibalism <laughs> on a long-term scale right. and have contracted Kuru is known as the zombie disease because they've eaten away so, it's eaten away so much of their brain that they literally become like, to the point of breathing and sleeping and only eating walking. like they're oh, they're right. like they're literally Zombies. there is no higher brain function it, it, it you pull these people, you do autopsies on them, you pull their brains out. It looks like Swiss cheese, like wow. Um, and and this is a literally a contracted disease of long term cannibalism. So did I don't mean to cut you off. No, no. So did did you get to Kuru because like people in the war were having it, or did somehow just rabbit hole and then it just stuff like popped up. I knew about like, what the hell's that? I knew about Kuru. Okay, okay. I knew about Kuru. Well, you are a previously. zombie film fanatic. And, yeah. And, so I yeah. knew about Kuru previously, um, but it kind I've of never the heard research of it, so the right. research kind of got here. But the reason that the research got here is because uh, the Japanese, when they were eating their buddies and their their you know killed, yeah, um, they would eat the liver. They would eat muscle tissue. They would eat everything except the head. Wow. So they would find heads where the body was completely ingested, but the heads were left alone. Hmm. And so... You think I, they knew? That's why I'm like, uh. so... <laughs> but, I mean, that also kind of gets back to the... The brain is not exactly an easy thing to get to. No, you've got to crack like we the said. hardest. Right. So... Maybe was it, it was a time frame? A time thing? thing? Yeah, I, don't know. I, I don't. I I really don't. I don't have an answer for you. Yeah, that's um, fine. But but the idea is like. I feel like it's not a respect thing. It's I, like, definitely so not. I'm a pretty respect sure that thing. right. That's what I'm saying. That, that's off the table. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure that it, they probably had an idea. Like, hey, this is not. Well, this is the bad part. But of the body. you only know that if you've spent or someone in the past has spent a great deal of time dealing with cannibalism. Very true. Like you don't know about this disease. We don't know about this disease until people start doing like right. Like it's crazy that we know about this because people have to obviously. <laughs> so who's the lab rat. I guess my point? idea was that wow. in the past was there like groups that would get involved with like heavy duty cannibalism, and then then other outside groups would kind of from a third person realm see that these people eat the dead, and then they're all crazy and die. Right. So, if you eat the dead, then this is going to happen. So, like, ipso facto, like, yeah. <laughs> you know, by proxy, we're not going to kill and eat and our, our enemies. Eat oh, right, yeah. You know, and then that keeps you from eating the brain if you're not oh, eating right. people, right? So, um, it's really only these, like, top-level cannibals, for lack of a <laughs> better level, right. <laughs> lack of a better descriptor. <laughs> right. But those are the ones that have to, like, get into the brain. And those would be the only one that would be affected and catch the Kuru disease, hmm. which burrows in your brain and eats your brain. So, I just, that's 
fan. Well, it's fascinating. I was gonna say fantastic. No, well, fantastic story, but it's fascinating because the whole. I thought that you were gonna go this route. There's the, and it may just be a different culture, but you know, in and it, again, horror films, so yeah. clearly not based on true stories necessarily. The whole concept of eating another human is to gain their energy, their strength, what have you, and you know right. what I mean. Turns out. Quite the opposite. Well, well unless you don't eat the well, brain, I yeah, guess. Yeah, I mean, def- definitely. Even it's, the heart and liver could actually be healthy. You don't I know. mean, I, I definitely would say that uh, the the uh, ingesting someone's power idea mm-hmm. definitely exists in the idea that you're scaring the fuck out of somebody. Yeah. To be able to do that, to to muster the strength to, uh, psychologically mm. to to eat another human. To be able to actually, right. So. It may not, you don't actually bring in any extra energy or their power, but you're Physically. definitely stealing the emotional and psychological power of your enemy That's by true. eating them. So, um, maybe that's where not, it came from. And I'm it, really it, not trying to, to have a good, strong <laughs> counterpoint to <debatable>. avoiding <laughs> cannibalism. But I mean, I can see where that started. Um, but it does, it does kind of make you wonder if. See, like old ancient cultures saw what cannibalism did to these handful of groups that were eating, the, participated the in bread. it, and then were like, "This is wrong. You should never do it." And then that kind of just got passed on, and to the point where, you know, it's like anything else. Like, there's reasons that we don't do things, even if we don't really remember the reason that we don't do that. Right, right. Like right. burying someone is more about containing decay and bacteria than it is. Where and that's not what we think of when we when we actually we go don't to think of it now. Somebody, well, that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah like but me, I we don't. But I mean, that's the whole point of like embalming someone is to to slow the decay. Yeah, and 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 this and that. And actually, there's some argument that embalming is there to ensure that they're actually dead at that point, uh, <laughs> instead of having them wake up in the coffin. It's kind of a, a oh. gentle, gentle tap on the shoulder. But I I, I mean. As much as I Good, hated being doing... buried alive is probably my number one, eh, well, like worst way to go, uh, and that's another. That's actually mine, another podcast. Mine's but, burned, but whatever. Burned. Uh, so, as much as this is very like, it, it was a very dark. Uh, yeah, sorry, sub, I sent you on sub, that. that um, no, I mean that it, journey, but it was it was very very interesting. I mean, I'd had an I had known of cannibalism in World War Two. But really, kind of only limitedly, I, I didn't know how prevalent it was <laughs> in like the investigation communities after they started clearing out some of these Pacific Islands and like really talking to some of these POWs and what they'd seen. Because I mean, nobody's coming home with a fucking happy camp story when they came home from a POW. Yeah, camp. guess what, kids? But like the levels that some of these groups like, went to, and I really only looked into a limited amount of some of the the cannibalistic story I, I felt like i covered enough of the, you found the, a lot within a week I mean, yeah. and i know you didn't sit around all day so that much is yeah. that just the, just that on the surface that i'm going to assume that you kind of crashed yeah the, the, yeah i mean i'm there's well dudes done. that have spent years like digging into these stories and as i i mean i couldn't really God, there's certain things researching too deep can just really like i wouldn't want to stick around that topic too much longer no. than we kind of no bought. i i think i felt like i really touched on the parts that i wanted to and i was happy <laughs> leaving it there and i actually gave the got the kuru story like i thought it was an entry in, interesting side story yeah, to that it was good but i, like I also like it as kind of uh uh, tales of woe or like the disclaimer against <laughs> cannibalism like yes. like kids you hear that yeah like <laughs> like if you were toying with the idea of long-term cannibalism here's a reason to stay <laughs> google with. kuru yeah yeah so <laughs> fantastic dude that was awesome so well, I, it's I, really actually it's if i sat and thought about it I'm, I'm trying to make light of the thing by laughing i told you that's my defense mechanism but it's really fucked up it, yeah it's, and, and really dark and what a horrible time to yeah, be alive like you know or i guess not a horrible time but a horrible uh situation to have to take part in or i mean be a part of i tend to inject humor yeah. or dark humor into most of the situations that that are kind of rub a little it's necessary. Rougher, I think, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but this one, I mean, dude, there's only, I mean, I gave some funny names maybe on like the neighbor or this and that, but right. <laughs> at the end of the day, like he's, like you can't really inject much humor into 
cannibalism in <laughs> POW camps, which is essentially that was the whole story. Is World War Two in general? POW camp alone is depressing, and then you go to POW camp cannibalism, and it just. <laughs> I mean, in Russia and Germany, I mean, you're going to freeze to death, this and that. Like, I I feel like cannibalism in Russia or Germany would be better. Sounds like it would be way better. There's nothing more disgusting than rotting, not not only human flesh, but just meat. Well, but... It's just, like, ugh. But, yeah, but... Like, also, my, my, my ground beef in the refrigerator changes a lighter color, and I'm like, ugh, nope, I'm out, it's gone. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm fucking, and, I mean, I'm I... Done. I'm somebody who, like, I don't like being hot. Yeah. So, I mean, me just being on one of those, like, Pacific Islands, I would have been miserable to start with. Yeah. And then you're going to tell me, like, this, I'm, like, I got captured, like, so I suck. Like, we got, <laughs> we got fucking routed. And then, like, on top of that, I'm not even getting fed. They're eating my buddy. Your friend. And I have to watch, or, and, or listen to him die in the, in Knowing the, that you could be next. Yeah. That, yeah. That's just that, pure torture. That I'm on the menu at some point. Oof. Well, I mean, so, if you were in a situation where it was survival, do you have any, are you the type of person that's going to go, no, nope, I'll just die? No, I, 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 I carry, I carry yeah. enough, <laughs> I, like, I could put that away, like, I, I could, I, you know, I'm, because I've never done it, so I can talk out whatever bullshit I want. Of course. But, I mean, I would like to think that that would be a chapter of, of a life where I could say, I did this to survive. It wasn't personal. I ate the dead. I didn't Absolutely. kill someone to eat. No. You know, those kind of things. Like, I, I think I would have enough of a humanity that I would not kill someone to eat. Oh, dude, 100%. You know? Like, if I go camping and it's, like, just me and another person, like... Already in my head, I'm like, the chances are. Yeah. I'm like, I'm well, I'm not going camping with you anymore, but <laughs> yeah, other than that. I'm like, not going to push you or anything. But right. Yeah. I mean, I guess keep hot sauce if, <laughs> yeah. if you go camping. Uh, oh, I do. But <laughs> And cumin. And cumin. <laughs> yeah, I, want my, I want my dead body to taste like body odor. Is that uh, is that the moral of this yeah, story? Cumin's fantastic. Nah, it's disgusting. All but right. anyway, that's a different argument. <laughs> All right, that's another All right, topic. So is it me picking up now? All right, I picking think up we're going to... the next yeah. week? So we're going to draw... How many uh, do I have left I here? don't know. Shoot. Um, you had like 12, right? Yeah, I believe Because the Catherine was... Knight story was one. Catherine Knight, actually, and I did. Cannibalism, cannibalism in World War Two was two. So you got 11 to choose from. <laughs> I'm not choosing here. shit. Google's choosing. Yeah. Or doing what the, story does Google want to hear? Google next week? wants to hear number eleven. <laughs> Damn, dude! Is it more cannibalism? It's kind of fitting. It's Japan's suicide forest. <laughs> Jesus Christ, <laughs> I, dude! By the end of this, I'm gonna have a whole hate fuck squad that's just chasing me around because I bashed Japan. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you, that's hilarious. Japan's suicide forest. forest yeah. yeah, I actually know some about this. I so. do too, and I actually find it. Really, really sad. Um, yeah, I it's going to be a hard one to, to crack smart ass jokes yeah, about. Yeah. But so for the lighthearted side, yeah. <laughs> but of I, podcasting. I think, but honestly, I'm I'm super curious about learning more because um, it's it's super fascinating. I mean, I, I, mean, I guess and I horrible could, that it's a, an actual. I, thing. I, I mean, I guess like I could go less serious than I did on this one and do actual research and just just do a whole <laughs> like thirty minute commentary on why this is fucking. <laughs> Why not to vacation in Japan? Yeah, suicide like, forest. like just stay the fuck away from Japan. Like <laughs> that—that's the moral of the 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 story that I've found so far is <laughs> is like the, even when they kind of like protract it away from like you know cannibalism on both sides of the field, it was still cannibalism. It was, was still the option. Still cannibalism. And Absolutely. So I mean, that wasn't that long ago. It hasn't even been a hundred years. So <sighs> well. Actually, there was, and I almost put it on there as a topic. It's, I forget the guy's name, but it's a Jap- Japanese guy that is a known cannibalism, still living. Um, I can't remember the, the whole story. Maybe I'll look it up, but it's, um, yeah, <laughs> Japan's got some uh, good ones. <laughs> and you get to research all of them. So, hey. <laughs> my apologies. That was not intentional. <laughs> well, all right, cool, man. Cool.